All right, welcome back down to the Chiefs pit. Uh, obviously, we're going to be doing something a little bit different today. Uh, this is Judson Petty. How's it going? And I'm Ramsey Petty. And, you know, we always get the question through the comments and everything. What are your kids doing these days? Are they racing? Are they into racing? What are they doing? So, Justin? Yeah, I mean, growing up, you know, that was that was a question I was asked all the time. You know, are you racing? Have you ever got into racing? Um, so, uh, And then a lot of people always ask you, why aren't you racing? You're petty. Like, that's what you do. Yeah, they just assume that we can just, you know, get in a race car and go, yeah. go on the track. But nobody understands. It's like. It ain't like baseball. You go buy your bat and you buy your glove. You spend yep. five hundred bucks and you go play baseball. Yep. But racing, you know, like like you were saying, you got to have ten million to make one million. So that's what Papa Chief always said. Yeah, that's what they you know. Said, he always yeah. said, if you want to make a million in racing, start with five and you'll end up with a million. And uh, I don't have a, a five million dollars sitting around to to start racing. So I mean, it's definitely something that was always interesting. Something that you know I always you know kind of wanted to try and i'm sure you did too yeah. you know just because you know growing up you, you go to christmas dinner or whatever around the family that's all you're going to hear everybody talking about was racing this racing that so you know wanting to try it is a natural kind of instinct that i had but you know just never really uh you know i never really wanted to that bad where i was like hey dad i want to go i, I want to go race um so i guess like around like 2000 10 or so I was probably 8 years old and I was you know loved baseball at that point and that's about the time they were filming Petty Blue and everything Yeah. so dad was helping out with that a lot uh, getting the stuff together and I'd get to go over to the shops and stuff and look around and uh, at that point I thought maybe you know I want to do this I want to race and I'd kind of been mentioning go-kart racing and everything and it kind of came down to dad was like okay we can go try this go-kart thing out but you're going to have to give up baseball because there's too much time, effort, and money that goes into this. Yeah. Like, you got to pick one or the other. And ultimately, yeah, I love baseball more than I love racing. Right. Especially at that point in my life. So, that's that's what I ended up doing. Yeah, and I think for me, too, you know, I was always playing baseball or basketball or football. So, you know, was always so busy with that. You know, had that thought in the back of my mind, yep. like, you know, racing probably would be cool. I feel like I would be good at this just because, you know, naturally I was a pretty good athlete and tended to be pretty good at anything i did just to be honest but um was just so busy with that and i love playing those sports so it just it just never kind of you know festered out i guess oh, yeah. but i think i think that if you'd have thrown either one of us in a car i think that we'd have figured it out at least because yeah we got just got that knack about us like yeah we're figure it out and like competitive like, yep like yeah. that's what we were talking about earlier about the you know the competitive nature that yeah. you know that's something that even though we weren't in a race car i mean i was a i was a big competitor yeah. um you know, yeah. always had that in me. You know, whatever we did, yeah, I mean, you, you want to win. The, uh, you had the the you had the most passing yards in random football history in a season, right? Yep. I All, think that still stands. Still stands. Yeah. yeah. So I definitely broke quite a few records yeah, at, at the old uh, stomping grounds. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it, it might not be in a race car, but you know, we still are carrying on the the petty legacy in other ways. Yeah, we so. definitely have. I mean, you know, de I mean, I feel like both of us have definitely made a name for ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know in our local community yeah. i mean obviously nothing like the king or, or no, the chief or, yeah. or or lee boy but you know in our ways and we've had fun doing it and like you said we've got to kind of feel that competitive nature that we have within us so Absolutely. i mean you know which i do miss i miss being able to compete um and uh but i feel like my my version of competing now is is in the form of business you know and uh, you know it's not the same but it kind of is you know you still have to show up every day and strap the boots up and you know go to work and you know business is a, a competition mm -hmm. you know what i mean so that's kind of that's kind of what i've led into and and that's that's kind of where i've been able to channel that that competitive nature yeah. uh, for myself so yeah um, so i guess that brings us into our next point what we're doing today so why don't you tell us about petty shine a little bit yeah petty shine i started petty shine um eight years ago um i was 19 um uh, I I was going to school at ECU. Um, came home that summer, had a job lined up, didn't work out, and so I just I started detailing cars um, just for fun, really because I had a truck um, in high school yeah. that I loved. You know, me and Dad, and uh, along with some guys up here from uh, Petty's Garage, souped it up. You know, lift kit, all this different stuff, made it nice. But either way, I always loved to keep it clean. So. You know, for me, that was something I always enjoyed doing. Me and my buddies would get together, hang out, 
and uh, you know all clean our cars together it was just a way for us to hang out yeah. but that led into like why don't i do this for some other people but long story short eight years later um you know we do we do a lot of stuff a lot more than just cleaning cars um and i also um i'm also an owner of a, a car wash self-serve car yeah. wash and um, we have mobile operations we have stuff going on in the shop um about five full-time employees so you know it, it started from my dad uh taking me to the advanced auto uh, parts store he gave me a hundred bucks and you know bought a bucket car wash soap you know just the basic stuff and you know it's grew into a, a a real business and you know it's been a lot of hard work but you know that's what i'm doing now and uh it's been pretty cool and yeah. what about you well first off though yeah <laughs> I remember back when you first started coming over and picking up mom's car and and because yeah yeah and doing that and then you did the whole for a while there you're doing the Petty Shine Mobile which you still do a little bit of that right yeah it's a little bit different now but we definitely in the beginning we we did a lot of mobile detailing yeah. so I had my truck all rigged up mm-hmm. you yeah know, I remember that and you wrapped uh, the truck in the Petty Shine that's pretty cool yeah we we had some different contracts with some bigger companies yeah. where we would go clean their fleets and stuff like that and you know at the time you know we we really counted on that kind of stuff to keep us going be able to you know pay the guys to help um you know and then it got to a point where the stuff inside the shop we got so busy with more of the higher end stuff like the ceramic coatings and uh you know doing the window tint and paint protection film and all that that we got too busy to do the mobile stuff yeah so you know um but now we have we do have a mobile guy but he he focuses more on doing work for like dealerships and um you know doing repairs like dent repair and, and stuff like that yeah. so but yeah i do remember doing your mom's yeah. car oh, yeah. and that was definitely it's in crazy the beginning. for me like just watching it grow like watching you grow the business and being innovative and everything like now you have you know bentley's in here and you got all these crazy cars uh yeah. porsches just whatever like some really high-end clients but it, it's a testimony to petty shine where, where it's came to because people, these high-end customers, they trust you. You build a, they really do. You build a name, like you build yeah. a brand, and I think that's really impressive. Yeah, and like kind of talking about the legacy or whatever. I mean, you know, I feel like running that business. I've always, you know, I've I've, I've always never given myself an option but to not win. Mm-hmm. And you know, I wanted wanted to have a place where no matter who you were, you could trust that you could come here and get it done right with the same kind of winning mentality that that the guys had back in the day to to go to the racetrack and and win a race. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so it, it definitely has been cool to see it grow. And then I also like with with you, and then a little bit with me. You know, we talk about Papa, the chief. Yeah. Uh, you know, being a great engine builder and being a great owner and all this other stuff. But he was a great businessman. Yeah. So I think that some of that's been passed down to us too. I mean, I he, think so too. He was yeah. kind of. They always said he was kind of the you know the guy behind Petty Enterprises, right. the stuff behind closed doors. He didn't really know about it, but he kept the business going. Yeah, that's 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 something that you just don't hear a whole lot about. No, and uh, but you definitely have to have that guy. Yeah, you know, you got to have, you know, the guy who's bringing the money in and you know working these deals out and, and just making everything work on the back end. And most of the time, that guy doesn't really get a whole lot of recognition. But you know, I definitely feel like you know there's definitely some of that in in me at least yeah. for sure. I mean, Absolutely. because um, you know it's a uh, it's, it's not easy to get a business off the ground no, starting with a hundred bucks yeah. and you know most people think just you know because of the last name like mm-hmm. you know that must have had some big investor coming in yep. here and uh you know just it just is just some smooth sailing ride but you know definitely not the case for old petty shine yeah. i mean it started from a hundred bucks and you know a lot of hard work oh, and yeah. you know that uh that that winning mentality yeah it's just amazing to see where it came from and where it's at now so it's definitely I, been cool i guess now i got to get into what i'm doing yeah so, uh so like we talked about before i uh played baseball all throughout high school and i was fortunate enough to to go on and play a couple years at, at unc Pembroke, and you know then i kind of decided that uh you know i was gonna focus on my education a little bit and try to finish up school a little early goes with a sizable lead the two two pitch slapped out to deep left field Glanton giving chase as this one clears the yard two run blast from Petty out to left field and that will make it a 9-1 ball game and uh, started at UNCG and um, so we always kind of heard stories from uh, Uncle Mark and yep. Uncle Timmy and Dad and uh, just really uh, 
we enjoyed them and everything, and we kind of pushed them to put them out there. They were definitely hesitant about it, wasn't yeah, they? Yeah, they were, but it's uh, they kind of, you know, the same deal. It's like, oh, well, we don't have nothing to share. Our, our yeah. stories aren't good enough. You know, who would want to listen to us? But right. To me, it's like it's a missing piece of the puzzle. It's, uh, you know, you always heard – one perspective and, and one outlook of everything but you haven't really heard you know our side of the family stories yeah I mean, you don't hear a lot about the chief you don't hear a lot about no. as much about lee right. petty and uh so but that's kind of what i'm doing now is I, I came home from school or from playing baseball and i started at uncg and that gave me a lot of time to be able to help them with with this podcast and getting it off the ground so we started it last year in november and you know, I've been the guy behind the camera recording everything, and so you've never seen me, but you know, I've been in every episode. <laughs> yeah, you definitely have yeah, been here. Huh? Yeah, and then uh, when we started the website and everything, uh, I run all that. So if you've ordered anything online, uh, I've had a hand in, in uh, shipping your package and everything. So I'm kind of behind the scenes and everything, and uh, I'm just really thankful to be a little bit, just a little piece of the puzzle yeah. in Petty Brothers Racing. So I'm not I'm not the talent or anything. Yeah. But, well, yeah. neither am I for sure. I yeah. mean, this is our first time doing anything like this. So, oh, absolutely. I mean, yeah. You know, forgive us that we're not uh, professionals we're not, like we're definitely uh, not professionals. Uh, no. Mark, Timmy, and, and Richie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. But. Uh, but yeah, it definitely is cool that you've uh, that you're a part of this, yeah. and and you've definitely learned a lot, right? Well, I've, I've learned and, a whole lot. I mean, I feel like that. You know, when I'm recording everything, I feel like I'm an audience member. Yeah. Like I, I've learned so much this year. And you think you know, you think you know a lot, but then they start telling these stories and yep. they remember something different. And then, uh, you know, you realize you don't know anything. Yeah. So it, it's really been special just to learn more about them and, and they're growing up and then Pawpaw Chief growing up and, and Lee. And it's just, yeah. It's they bad. definitely have a lot of stories and, um, you know, it, it's crazy that it's been a year since, since y'all yeah. started. And we've come this. a long way. I mean, almost we're approaching 4,000 subscribers and what? When this goes out, we might have four thousand. We're yeah. I think we're like three thousand nine hundred and ninety or so, so. And I can't believe how many people comment and, yeah. and show support on on the shows. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, it's a lot. And we read every comment. We appreciate them. And yeah, you know, I feel like I think that's what makes this show go. Is it's not yeah. it's not really. I don't feel like that they're really talking down to anybody or anything. It's like they're they're sitting around the table and they're talking to you. Right, and that's kind of when I'm sitting back in the chair. I might not be sitting at the table, but I still feel like I'm I'm sitting at the table. Right, more or less. So. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely been a cool experience, and yeah, I'm glad I'm glad these got you know, Dad and 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 Richie and Timmy. You know, they really enjoy doing it, and oh, yeah. and I think that's a big part of it too. I don't, you know, if they hated doing this every week, they wouldn't be doing it. Yeah. And you know, it's bringing them closer together. It's yeah. uh, it's 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 really a cool thing, and obviously had a lot of good support over it, and mm-hmm. you know, definitely a cool deal. And I think that too. You know, I know we've said, they've said it over and over that, okay, we started doing this to record the videos for us so that we could, you know, archive them and then we could share them with our kids one day. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we kind of, like we said, we had to push them to actually put them out there. Yep. But when they did, I mean, they're, they're great stories. I, I like They watching. really are. Yeah. It's like they don't think that there's anything to it yeah. um, because it's just their life. Yeah. But, like, what, you know, I guess when you look at it from an outside perspective, you know, their life is full of these experiences that, you know, most people don't get to have in their lifetime and, and they're unique and rare you know it's a unique and rare experience that they've got to live in their life and i think too you know sometimes i feel like they don't feel like they've done a whole lot but man what they didn't have a whole lot starting off with and what they no. were able to make out of it it's great i mean they they ran a cup team out of a what three or four garage door yes garage? i mean it's I, just I, crazy and i i think that me and you could definitely talk a lot about that yeah uh, i think so we'll do a whole yeah. episode on that yeah. for sure well, yes. I yeah. guess this is probably going to be our stopping point for today. But just yeah. going forward, the Petty Brothers are always going to be on Monday. That's never going to change. They're the talent. That's This is their deal. But on Thursdays, you know, we dropped under the hood last week with uh, Timmy. And we're going to give you a little bit different perspective with that. And maybe some people that Timmy worked with at RCR are going to come in and, and kind of talk about, like, you know, the next stage of everything. Because, you know, Dad and them – go towards the 90s and everything and timmy's going to be more modern stuff and then um on saturdays or whenever we end up deciding to drop this we're going to give you the fourth generation perspective and you know this is not going to be an every week deal but every once in a while we're going to give our thoughts on things yeah so yeah looking forward to it yep thank you guys yep thanks like and subscribe we appreciate everything see you next time